today. Take Two is going to release a ton of games in the next two years. Some of them will even be new. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, the show where everything is true and well-researched, but the stories don't matter. Hey, hold up. They matter to me. Pete, you're doing a story about Sonic the Hedgehog. You win this round, Stark. It's Sonic's 30th anniversary, apparently. And to celebrate, YouTube is flagging content by Sonic fans as made for kids. For example, one creator animated Sonic and friends playing hot potato with a pipe bomb. Which, given the kind of content that regularly shows up on YouTube Kids, would not be out of place. So, hey, maybe that's why YouTube's algorithm auto-flagged the video as made for kids. And why, when the creator challenged that auto-flag, the algorithm also immediately rejected the challenge. To be clear, you do not want your content on YouTube Kids. The site doesn't let you have comments or monetize your videos. So they languish with no views while toddlers watch repeats of Elsa and Spider-Man smashing Peppa Pig's head with the mallet. Now I could get into the reasons why YouTube must not think this is a problem since they're really only interested in not offending the lawmakers as opposed to the parents of the kids that their site is scarring for life. But that's not the point of the story. The point is, if you spend any time on the internet, you'd be hard pressed to find any Sonic content that's safe for kids. Or for work? Sonic has never been for kids. Sure, in the 90s, there was a brief moment where Sonic was for edgy teenagers, longing to latch onto a corporate mascot full of manufactured attitude so they could vicariously live out fantasies of telling off the man, or at least Mr. Felton in industrial arts without incurring the displeasure of their parents and risk losing the allowance they so desperately needed to help fill out their Hot Topic wardrobe. But those teens soon became adults with access to the internet and revealed to everyone the adult shape of Sonic. I warn you, the proof is shocking, but for the good of the nation, we have to show it. Is this for kids? Or this? Or this? Ugh. Enough, Paul, get that filth off the screen. Anyway, Sonic the Hedgehog is strictly for consenting adults, and YouTube should be turning that auto-flagging algorithm on content that's unequivocally only for children. Content that adults would never be interested in. You know, like Magic the Gathering. Square Enix has announced it will be making more announcements next month. The pre-announcement announcement was delivered by Tetsuya Nomura during a promotional stream for the Final Fantasy VII Mobile Battle Royale spin-off, The First Soldier, an event that nobody would have given a single polished dog turd about if Nomura hadn't slipped in that more Final Fantasy VII news was coming next month to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the game. Will the upcoming announcements include an announcement about the second part of the FF7 remake? Or will it be an announcement that outlines yet more future announcements? Only time and the legendary patience of the Final Fantasy VII fanbase will tell. Hold on to your meticulously rendered hats, folks, because NVIDIA is on the verge of releasing the RTX 4000 series in the next few months. I mean, sure, it's the nature of corporations to continue to develop and manufacture new products that we expect to outperform any previous offerings, so this shouldn't come as any real surprise. After all, we're all consumers, and thus our very nature is to consume more and more goods in order to perform our duty with the open marketplace and ensure the ongoing spiral of capitalism that drives the economy upward ever upward to greater and greater heights with no possibility of stopping or even slowing down. Also, now the video cards have a 4,000 on them. That's almost 39,000 in Norway. So that's good news. Are they faster than the ones that have a 3,000 on them? Yep, that's always how it works. Will you be able to buy them? Possibly, who knows? Are you talking availability or price? Crypto mining is still legal and therefore always morally correct, so there's a good chance you'll never be able to build a tricked out max spec gaming PC ever again. 
On the other hand, we still haven't had to upgrade our gaming PC in the last few years, so I'm starting to wonder if this endless treadmill of GPU consumption is actually worth it. In fact, my fucking Switch is working just fine without any upgrades, which is maybe my fault? I mean, purely by bringing that up, I am an asshole. Anyway, the Nvidia story is a leak and therefore probably complete bullshit, but for some reason, I just felt like doing this story today. Huh. Enjoy your weekend! In a detailed yet still vague report, Take-Two Interactive has laid out their plans to release more than 30 games between now and 2025, and to the surprise of all, only eight or so will be ports. Mostly we bring you this story because it's interesting to see how a publisher categorizes its games when it's talking to investors, but they lay out five different categories of game and their definitions for what's coming down the pipeline. Immersive Core, which I briefly thought was its own action strategy title, is actually Take-Two's Category 4, titles that have the deepest gameplay and the most hours of content. Stuff like the 2K sports franchises or Grand Theft Auto. Independent are simply games being developed externally. Mobile are, you guessed it, games for mobile devices. And they specifically mention the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition, which is a bold stance considering how tremendously they bungled that one the first time around. The next category is mid-core, which they call titles that are either an arcade title or games that have many hours of gameplay but not to the same extent as an immersive core title, which sounds pretty arbitrary but I guess they're operating on a look, I'll know it when I see it system. And finally, new iterations of prior releases, which includes ports and remasters, but not sequels. And now that we've burrowed down to the immersive core of Take-Two's release plan, what have we learned? That they're planning to release over twice as many full-scope titles as ports? Or that there's a new Tales from the Borderlands game coming, but since Telltale imploded, Gearbox is making it themselves? Or that the ways gaming studios choose to categorize things is utterly disconnected from the language players actually use? Yeah, all of that. And that's all the news for this week that was fit to print. Uh, we don't print any of this. It goes up on YouTube and sometimes TikTok when I remember. We don't even print the script. I'm reading this off a teleprompter. I know what I said and I stand by it. The score is now tied. Beej and Graham have one point each. Coming up in gruesome take to some news, CEO Strauss Zelnick has said that FIFA has a great brand and incredible clout, but we have no current plans to discuss. Presumably his coy, unless, was accidentally emitted by reporters. You know, we didn't talk about this week. Why didn't we talk about this week? We didn't talk about anything to do with uh, NFTs. As nice as freeing in a way. Yeah, yeah. But there were two little little stories that I found very funny. Yeah. Because uh, for those keeping score at home, the entire notion of NFTs has really cratered Cratered. recently, which is just lovely. Um, Which means that people entering that space now, Mm -hmm. I find very funny. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so... KG Inafune. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I saw that come up, Mister Mister Mega Mister Mega Man. Yeah, Mighty uh, Number no. Nine there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw someone say, "Mighty Number No Fucking Thanks," because <laughs> uh, he he was back with a new project that's like, check it out! It's NFTs of things what look like Mega Man bosses, kinda, and people are like, KG, come on, man! So you're selling NFTs of your fan art. Which, when you come right down to it, sometimes that's what a lot of NFTs end up being. So, yeah. uh, And GameStop, of course. GameStop has now, f- like, formally oh. been like, buckle in, everybody. We're going to the, you know, they're, they're all, like, using the, the super stonk language of, you know, we're going to the moon. So the next time that we do a story about you know, this, we're all going to make it that graphics kind of, we can use. Ugh. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to last time when it was like Paul had to scramble to be like, I'm trying to find anything that says GameStop and NFT in the same space. And it's like, there's, it's out there. I'm sure it's out there. But It's yeah. just like the the momentum that must that, that they must have been working with internally yeah. to be tr- trundling forward, see NFTs absolutely crater and be like, well, we've 
got to keep pressing on. Yeah, you is know what like, it is? Is it's it's you always have to be sure to throw bad money after after good. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. That's what I was taught. Throw out the Reggie with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God damn it. I'm glad for him that he's not there anymore. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. The algorithm also... I gotta do that again because I have so much shit in my mouth. All right. Not actual shit, people at home watching <laughs> this outtake. <laughs> he was... Uh, so Reggie had a, had a brief moment where he was like, I could see how this could be very valuable. I mean, for example, let's say somebody wanted to buy my Animal Crossing village. And I'm like... <clears throat> Trying to connect the dots on that one. Mm. I mean, obviously, this could be I'm thinking 10 steps ahead or whatever, but I'm also thinking, like, why was that the first thing that came to mind that you were like, your Animal Crossing village must be so good that somebody needs to own an imaginary receipt. Oh, no, I'm sorry, a real receipt tied to a location where your village is being hosted. I'm just like, I don't... If you want to sell the, the village as DLC, then I'm like, sure, I, people will probably buy that and load it onto their systems or something, perhaps, right? right. Except they can't because it would wipe out their own island. But you're talking about saying, I'll sell the rights to my village. I'm like, does that mean that you can never touch your village again? Or does that mean that now you're a contractor working for somebody who owns your village? Does that mean that whoever owns your village is Tom Nook and you now have to take orders from them on what you want done in your village? There's a lot of logistical troubles with just saying things like that, Reggie. Yeah. Yeah. He's a dreamer. Bigfoot <laughs> pizza. What? That was his thing. Pizza Hut's Bigfoot pizza. Remember he that? made the Bigfoot pizza. That was his idea. If I remember correctly, that was his idea. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hi, IRC. That, did that stack up against the, the Tombstone pizza? I probably had to. I think remember it, the Tombstone? Yeah. 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 I don't know what brands these were for. <laughs> one was Domino's and one was Pizza Hut, yeah, I think. Like the Pizza Hut was the big, big, uh, was Bigfoot. I remember that. Tombstone yeah. was like, because uh, I know they had Tombstone pizza as a thing you could order in this, like as a, it was like, it was, it was Delicio essentially. Right. <laughs> right. Remember when Delicio was DiGiorno? I don't know when that happened either. Yeah, that was like a weird kind of, that's that Mandela effect kind of thing kicking in where you're like, no, that was never that. And it's like, no, it was DiGiorno pizza at one point. And then they changed it because nobody could figure out how to pronounce it, I'm sure. Remember when Checkpoint was about video games? Yeah. <laughs> Beat everybody to the comments on that one.